Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be doing a uh, early look at the NFL slate for uh, this coming Sunday. I'm probably going to be away and unable to participate in a lot of the later week stuff, so I want to give you an idea of where I'm at with after the first run of projections. And the way I'm going to handle this may be a little different. Again, I'm trying to figure out the best way to always deliver content, and just in the absence of actual direction, in the absence of a definite way to do it, I'm just going to do what I feel is most fun at the time. I'm just kind of experiment with different ways of doing it. So what we're going to do today is first, I'm going to go through and kind of instinctively feel as though what I would think would be good games. And then I'm going to use my projections and show what I think the projections are showing. And I think that is a kind of a good way to think about the NFL slate is to give yourself an idea of what you think should happen and then compare that to the numbers and, and kind of continue to tweak throughout the week and adjust to news and things like that. Um, Bobby and I did literally a 30 second version of this during the live stream last night, na last night. But so what I've done, I have my projections off to the right now and, and I'll drag those up there in here after I go through the, you know, instinctive look. Um, Cause I really even haven't looked at the projections yet. And we're going to do this live. Um, live meaning as I'm doing obviously this recording is not live anyway let's go through this and and kind of as far as games go like first off the bat I, I do think the Cleveland Atlanta game could be somewhat interesting you know Atlanta does you know tend to give up yards and Cleveland I sort of know where the where the targets are going like if Brissett is going to be keen up keying in on Amari Cooper um that's a really kind of a good place to start with a kind of a low owned stack I think um and the other thing is the tight end for Cleveland, uh, Njuku, is, uh, you know, he's very athletic. And I wouldn't mind something like, you know, a, a Brissett, Njoku, Cooper thing to kind of just, you know, just win the Millie maker right off the black, off the bat. Because I don't think anybody's going to do that. Uh, if anything, people are going to play Nick Chubb, and certainly it makes sense. Um, but I think that this is a cool way to play especially also considering that Atlanta, I mean, you have this, this, this run back, just who's always just a great play. You know, you have Cordell Patterson, who's just the lead back there, except for his game against the Rams with who the hell's doing anything against the Rams. Anyway, the guy smashes every freaking week. I don't know why people are not playing him. Um, and I think he's a tremendous play this week as well. So yeah, Cleveland's defense is, is, is strong. Um, but I don't know, man, uh, they're in a dome. Uh, he's going to get the work and this game could shoot out. Who knows? Um, so right off the bat, I think those are probably, it's a good kind of low own way to start Buffalo, Baltimore. I, I imagine it's got to be really popular. I mean, you have just, just two offenses that can really crank it up here. Um, so, you know, Allen and Diggs, I presume are going to look really good. Um, Diggs that did, did move up a thousand, but I don't think it's going to matter. And Lamar is just, 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 doing it you know what I mean like uh the, the problem with Lamar is again it's kind of hard to know who to pair him with so what people are I think going to naturally try to do is pay up for Mark Andrews I actually think that is a mistake on this slate um I think that paying up for tight ends in general kind of a mistake I I, I just I just feel that the wide receivers at 7100 is better than these tight ends masquerading as wide receivers and again, I, people are going to disagree with me on that. They're going to say, no, Andrew's just like a regular wide receiver. I just don't think that's the case. Um, and so for me, I'm probably going to fade that, which means that I'm probably going to end up either like recommending somebody like Rashad Bateman or just kind of nothing at all from the Baltimore side. So this is going to be probably somewhat contrarian, I guess, is, is kind of trying to fade this game a little bit. Um, I imagine it's going to be popular. Uh, Washington, Dallas, I can't imagine anything good coming out of this game. Uh, so I'll just ignore that for now. Seattle, Detroit, Detroit always seems to put up high scoring games and against Seattle, who is just really haven't been that great defensively at all. Um, these guys are, uh, ooh, uh, Detroit against, uh, Seattle is uncertain, uh, after an ankle, after an ankle, uh, Injury, maybe. Hold on a second. Um, so if he plays, I mean, first of all, he's going to be a good play. And if he doesn't play, 
then these other guys like DJ Shark is gonna is gonna step up and Josh Reynolds is gonna step up. I mean, they're gonna be they're gonna be like elite players. Oh my god! If 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 A. St. Brown is Avant, Armand St. Brown is out somehow in this game, first of all, the spread will be a little bit closer. So it, it rates to oh my god. DJ Shark and Josh Reynolds will be, I mean, just super elite plays, probably really chalky. So these are decisions you're going to have to make. If, in fact, A. St. Brown's out, I think he's going to play. Um, that just my me talking out of my ass, I guess. So um, all these guys look good. Problem, if you stack the game, is where's your run back? Well, I mean, it's Metcalf or it's Lockett. You know, I think it makes perfect sense. So I do like that. Uh, the running back situation in Detroit is kind of interesting as well. Um, uh, Swift is they're They're saying that he might have two weeks off or something like that. Um, that is interesting. Um, which means that Jamal Williams, who obviously got a lot of work is going to make a lot of sense at 6,100. Um, pause for a sec. Um, Houston LAC, um, Chargers looked really bad last week. Um, then again, Jacksonville has taken a lot of teams by surprise. That's really not – wasn't too surprising to see what see that happen. I mean, Eckler's injury was very fishy all week long. It wasn't just Eckler. I mean, they just got – kind of got rolled by Jacksonville, if I'm on the truth. Um, I do expect them to bounce back a little bit. Uh, so this game could deliver, I suppose. I don't know if Houston really has the manpower to play a high scoring game, though. I mean, Pier Pierce is Pierce is good running back. Just don't know if Houston's got the passing game to really just make this game go. So I don't think it's a particularly great stacking type game. Uh, Tennessee, Indianapolis. I mean, you got gonna be a rushing heavy game. I mean, between Henry and Taylor, I don't think this game is particularly good to deliver. So probably avoid that. Although I will say that you know Derrick Henry always has a ceiling as does Jonathan Taylor, but I think both of these teams are going to are good enough defensively to kind of keep them in check. I think this game kind of waits to be sort of a dud giant Chicago. No, I mean, I think Barkley's, I guess, reasonable, but Chicago can defend the run decently. So I don't really think that game's going to deliver Jacksonville, Philly. I mean, this game could blow up. Uh, this, this game is certainly, um, certainly possible. And you have, you have James Robinson who, you know, people signed his death warrants over this over the last season, but ugh, look at this. I mean, you got 100 yards a game, one game, 20 fantasy points. I mean, the game, two games before that. I mean, he's legit at 6,400. Uh, this game goes crazy. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of guys that can do stuff here. Uh, Jacksonville, they could you could play Christian Kirk, even Marvin Jones Jr. And obviously on the Philly side, I mean, they're kind of loaded. You could play A.J. Brown or Devontae Smith. It's still cheap at 5,800. Um, Jalen Hurts, obviously, kind of expensive. But I think this game is probably a high enough total where this game can be stacked. This game can kind of go off. So I do like this. Pitt Jets, no. It's going to be really boring and awful. Carolina, Arizona, I, I, this is a definitely a pace-up spot for Carolina, as the kids like to say. And I'm still waiting for – McCaffrey to have a blow up game. Uh, maybe it's just not in the cards for him, so to speak, <laughs> uh, anymore. But I don't know. Uh, Arizona plays fast, and I think that Carolina is going to be dragged along in that kind of pace. And I think that McCaffrey could have a really good game here. Um, aside from that, not a lot of interest here. I don't. I don't really feel like playing the Arizona side against the Carolina defense. So uh, that's pretty much it there. New England Green Bay with with uh, what's his name out um, Brian Hoyer quarterback. I mean, this is this is going to be a crap uh, shit show. <laughs> I think Green Bay is going to really throttle them. And look, and you want to play Aaron Jones. You want to play that's reasonable. You want to play some of the cheaper wide receivers. Maybe you can go back to maybe Romeo Dobbs. I mean, eight targets, eight receptions, 21 fantasy points. You know, you can go back to him. But I don't think that Green Bay is going to need to do all that much to handle this game. So uh, probably avoid that. And Vegas, Denver. Um, I have this feeling that, that this game is going to deliver a little bit. Uh, you know, Denver just played a really boring 
11-10 game against San Francisco, but that's not the first, and it, nor will be the last 11-10 game San Francisco is in line to play. So I, I think that – I do think that Denver – has more offense than they're letting on. Not they're letting on, they're delivering. And and the and Vegas is a is a much easier team to score against than the teams Denver's in playing. So I think that this game could be could be really, really sneaky. So I would go I would play Vegas uh with Adams and, and Waller and the usual suspects. And Sutton is, you know, either of these guys, Sutton or Judy, is really, really in play. Sutton was the deli- delivered more in this last game. Um, Judy was at, you know, two of six, two, two receptions, six targets, but I, I don't think any, I can't see any reason why that won't flip in the last game, the next game. So I would say Judy would be the, the, the pivot play. Um, and I think this game could really deliver. So the, that's kind of like my overall view of the slate. Right. But let's take a look now from a more, you know, data driven perspective and let's see how the projections like kind of look and I'm dragging them in literally for the first time. And what I'm going to do is, is, is I'm going to first, I'm going to list it by position. Then we're going to look at the stats. So we're going to rank these by sheets value score, which is, let's just get into it. I mean, this is like my favorite way of, of, of ranking these guys, kind of a combination of points per dollar and just raw points. And then I'm going to resort it by position. Um, And just for no other reason, just alphabetically, I have the defense first. So that's the first thing I'll, I'll go over. And it looks like the Bears against the Giants uh, looks to be the you know the best value defense um, at twenty seven hundred, um, and then it's just kind of everybody's kind of equal after that. I don't spend a lot of time on defense just to show you. As far as the quarterback position, you'll see that Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts oops, rate to be the best from a sheets value score perspective, and they're going to be you know owned as you know as a result of that. Um, then you get Marcus Mariota. At fifty six hundred and Goff at twenty at, at and Goff at fifty nine hundred. You know, I talked about you know Goff is going to be probably popular. I mean, Detroit will be, but I don't know how popular Atlanta is going to be. You know, in that Cleveland game. So I don't know. That's that's another it's another indication of how that game could be uh could be sort of interesting, I guess. Then you have Derek Carr who rates pretty well over here. I talked about that Vegas game. Now let's look at the running backs. Um, you have a whole bunch of guys here, and the one that stands out is Montgomery as, as kind of like the value. You want to make sure he's playing, though. I mean, he got knocked out in the last game after like ten snaps, so I got to figure out what's going on there. Otherwise, Herbert like rates to probably get all that work. Um, and then we look at the let's look at the at the pricing, for example, of Herbert. First of all, let's see what it says on Montgomery. He's day to day, but if like Herbert gets that work at 5,700, I think he's probably just as good of a play as Montgomery. So got to monitor that. Uh, Eckler, DeAndre Swift is probably going to be out. So we have to, uh, we have to adjust that. We have to see how Jamal Williams is going to, going to project. And what else looks good over here? Pretty much it. Um, let's see. I think tight end is going to show up next. Tight end, you have Hawkinson. That's another guy from the from the Detroit game that's kind of showing up. And then there's the Mark Andrews, as I mentioned. But I think TJ Hawkinson is just going to be a better play. Um, and again, especially I mean, if St. Brown is out, I mean, that whole Lions passing game is going to be so affordable. Um, then you have Jared Everett showing up here, it's kind of nice and spread out among the tight ends. So what, again, what I would probably do is probably not really play the Andrews play and just take your pick out of these kind of mid-range or cheapos. Let's take a look at the wide receivers. And then what we'll do is we're going to resort these by point per dollar and do the same thing. But you have uh, Stefan Diggs, who is um, – uh, Stefan Diggs, who rates to be very strong, as I mentioned, is going to be chalky. Then there's St. Brown. We have to check his status. You have Brandon Cooks, kind of a run back in that Houston game, which I didn't really think about. So that could be a good play. Tyler Lockett showing up, that Seattle play. Uh, I don't think that many people are going to go to that game. Actually, no, no, no. They're the run back in the Detroit game. So, yeah. So it's interesting that that Lockett rates to be better than Metcalf. Uh, 
everything you know being equal. DJ Moore, he looks like a good cheapo. There's CD Lamb. Um, so yeah, so now what I want to do is I want to resort all these by point per dollar and see if it makes a difference. So we're going to resort by point per dollar. We'll resort by position. And again, you'll see the pist pistons, the um the Bears being the top defense again. Let's see how these running backs and other position players pan out. So you'll see, as I mentioned, Montgomery, but again, that's going to be replaced by Herbert, maybe. See Josh Jacobs looking really strong at a point per dollar play here. Um uh not strong, but one of the stronger ones, I guess. There's Barkley again, but but Josh Jacobs showing up as a as a decent play. And again, it's more from that Vegas game, which I think is going to be ignored because it is Denver, this this Denver low, low, these low scoring games that Denver's put up. But I don't know. I think this could end up being Mr. The Sneak. And let's go down to other positions, tight ends. Uh, I already mentioned TJ Hawkinson, strong play. Gerald Everett shows up. Gerald Everett and Dawson Knox show up as, as good point per dollar plays. Dawson Knox, not a surprise. Gerald Everett might be a little lower owned. And then wide receivers. You get Nelson Aguilar. I presume that's because they still think Jacoby Myers is going to be out. So we have to take a look at that. Um, Brandon Cooks, again, showing up as a good play. And it's then the same guys we mentioned before. Richie James, 4K. Listen, if if if, if Sterling Shepard is going to be out, I mean, he was injured on the last play of the game um, uh, yesterday. And if he's out, then then the Giants receiving core is, continues to be in shambles. And it doesn't look like Kenny Holiday has any interest in playing or they have no interest in playing him. So could be the Richie James show, for better or for worse. Um, uh, I mentioned Tyler Lockett, Zay Jones, part of that Jacksonville game, you know? So the, from the individual plays that that's kind of what we're at, but now what I want to do is I want to pull up the, the, the stacks and see, and we're going to try to put this on the site. One of these days, we want to rate these stacks. And again, this is what we're looking at here on the left. We have, you know, uh, three man, three receiver stacks. And on the right, we have two receiver stacks. So let's look at the two receiver stacks. And the first thing I want to do is just rate them by just kind of raw points. And you'll see that that Buffalo, I have them rated first. You know, it makes sense. Then after that, you have this group of three, Philly, Vegas, and Detroit. So again, you have this Vegas play that's kind of showing up here. Um and the thing that I'll notice, at least an early look, is that Vegas is lower owned than, than say, Detroit and Buffalo. I also see Philadelphia, these guys being somewhat lower owned. I guess that fear that, you know, that you don't know where the where the targets are going with 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 Hertz and maybe he'll run one in. But I think it's pretty clear that these are the two dudes nowadays. So um if Philly ends up low owned somehow, I don't know if they, how that's possible. But um I mean, these look like very strong plays. So Buffalo, Philly, Vegas with some leverage, and Detroit would be the top guys there. Now let's look at when you look at them from a, a, a more of a value perspective. Again, you get Buffalo, Detroit, Philly, Vegas, and you got little sneakers. You got little Seattle showing up. I mentioned them before, you know. So again, Buffalo, Detroit. Detroit, Seattle, part of that same game. So that's kind of a good game stack situation. And then you have Vegas, you know, keeps showing up there. And you play them, you know, you don't play Buffalo, you know, whatever. And, and you play Vegas and you run it back with, say, Jerry Judy or something like that. Um, I think that's that's going to be something decent. Again, I don't know really where ownership is going to come in as content kind of just, just pounds away, you know. But um, – that's, I guess this, that's my initial look. Now, again, there's plenty of injury news that I kind of glossed over in two seconds that is going to determine a lot of the value that kind of develops over the course of the week. I mean, A. St. Brown, obviously, that makes sense. Uh, David Montgomery, that news continues to, to generate interest. The um, um, DeAndre Swift, when he, if, when he gets ruled out, see how the public reacts to Jamal Williams. Aside from that... Um, that's pretty much my early look at the NFL slate, at least from the DraftKings perspective. Um, Bobby's going to do a lot more down, you know, digging over the week and as will Rody and 
those guys will probably be live every Sunday, but at least I didn't want to put in at least my initial takes um, for you to chew over or stew over, stew over, stew over, chew over, uh, chew on and stew over for the next couple of days. Uh, and that'll do it. Good luck.